Have you ever been on a construction site completely frozen because someone asked you a question you didn't know the answer to? That feeling like if you don't respond fast enough, everyone will think you're just another graduate who has no idea what they're doing. But here's the truth, no one expects you to know everything. But there's one mistake every new engineer makes, one that can wreck your confidence and even cost you sleep. And today I'll show you exactly how to avoid it. When I first started as a structural engineer, I thought I had to have all the answers. I wanted to impress my boss. I wanted contractors to see me as the expert. In fact, let me tell you a story about my very first site inspection. It was my first job as an engineer in Australia and I was super anxious. I had to inspect by myself without my senior engineer, a slab on ground for a car wash. You know those ones, the car rolls in on a ramp and then the wash equipment moves along a track, spinning and doing its thing. One of the guys on site noticed how nervous I was and started asking me questions. He was clearly trying to take the piece. He was asking, how am I supposed to lay the top reinforcement? As if there was no bar chairs for that. But I froze. You know, my mind started racing. I thought we detailed it wrong. Maybe what we did wasn't even buildable. I thought the standard bar chairs that you can get from the shops are not high enough. So I had no idea what to say. But then before I could even respond, another guy stepped in. He saw that the dude was clearly taking the piece and said, don't worry, we figured out and put the guy away. And that was it, my very first inspection. And I went home feeling defeated like I had failed because I did not know the answer. And I knew that that guy was messing up with me because I looked anxious and nervous. Look, I'm not saying that that's gonna happen to you, but looking back, those moments helped me build a thick skin. And with time, I learned how to handle these situations better. And to be fair, that was the only time someone really tried to mess with me like that. And honestly, that guy was probably just having a bad day. But we can draw some lessons from that situation. So lesson number one is to stay composed. It's easy to panic when you're put on the spot, but you have to stay calm. People can sense when you are nervous and it can make the situation even worse. Take a deep breath and focus on the task you're doing. I know it's easier said than done, but every time you go through an experience where you think you messed up, remember that moment is just preparing you for a stronger and more confident version of yourself. Number two, study the project beforehand. Always review the design and construction details before an inspection. And most importantly, understand how the structure is supposed to be built so you can confidently assess whether it's been done correctly. And number three, it's okay to say, I'll double check and get back to you later. You don't have to answer every design related question on the spot. If you are unsure, it's perfectly fine to say, I'll check and get back to you later. No one will judge you more than you judge yourself. And I'm gonna repeat that. No one will judge you more than you judge yourself. It's better to take a little extra time than to make a costly mistake. If you answer a question that you are unsure, your mind will start racing, you will panic and sprint back to the office to double check your answer. So let's avoid this headache. Another thing that used to stress me out inside inspections was having the site manager follow me the whole time. It made me feel like I had to rush, like I couldn't really take my time and focus. But here's the thing, you don't have to do the inspections with them hovering over you all the time. If it makes you feel more comfortable, just say in a friendly way, hey, I'll take a look around and if I have any questions, I'll let you know. Simple as that. And it gives you time to properly inspect things without feeling pressure or having any distractions. But again, if you are prepared and study the project, you should be fine anyway. By the way, if you want to become a confident structural engineer, join our community. We have a program that teaches you step-by-step step the whole process of designing residential houses in Australia. So after getting through my first site inspections, I faced another huge challenge which was trying to learn everything at once. There's so much to know in structural engineering. 
you have to make sure the layout suits the architecture. You have to ensure the builder can actually construct what you have designed. You have to work out the loads, the load paths, learn timber, steel, and concrete design. And that's just the start. It's overwhelming. And honestly, a lot of engineers waste time learning things they don't even need yet. I remember early in my career, I spent days building a spreadsheet to design concrete columns. I was very proud of it until my boss came over and said, yeah, that's cool, but you're not going to design any concrete columns in your next projects. And if you need to, you can just use this software that we have here. I realized I was spending time on something I wouldn't use anytime soon. So I switched my focus to something I needed immediately. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you shouldn't learn how to design concrete columns. I'm sure someone in the comments will say you should learn all these things and blah, blah, blah. But you know what I mean. It's a matter of priority. Prioritize what's important for you now. So lessons learned. Lesson number one, learn only what's relevant to your current projects. Don't waste time on topics you won't use right away. If you're designing houses, focus on timber framing, steel framing, footings and load paths. Save advanced topics for when you actually need them. Lesson number two, organize your notes for later. Keep your study materials and notes well organized so you can revisit them when the time comes. This way you're not starting from scratch every time. Lesson number three, move on to other topics as your career evolves. You know the saying, structural engineering is a marathon, not a sprint. You will naturally expand your knowledge as you take on new projects and challenges. And why this matters? Every resource you collect but don't use, it's not an asset, it's a debt. We only have so much brain power. Don't waste it. Focus on quality over quantity and you will build a solid practical knowledge base that actually helps you in your job, which is what we're doing in our community. Link in the description below. I know it's annoying saying that all the time, but that's what I've been told to do. So people click on the link. Now let's talk about something extremely important, but no one will ever sit down with you and teach you that, which is budget money, cash, plata, dinero, chun chun. Here's the deal. Engineering is a business. You're not just designing buildings. You're working in a business and businesses exist to make money. Your boss has a family to provide for. Your company has bills to pay. If you're not doing your part to keep the business profitable, why should they keep you? And I get it, when you're new, it's hard to make the company money and that's not your fault. Good managers should know your strengths and give you projects that match your skill level. But if they don't, here's what happens. You go over budget, you start freaking out, you work unpaid over time, you burn out, and then you start hating your job. And trust me, you don't want that. So how to stop wasting time and stay on budget? Before you start any project, do this. Ask your boss what the fee for the project is. Or check the job folder, it should have a fee proposal in there. Break it down. How many hours should you spend on each task? If you don't know that, ask your boss. And finally, stick to that time. No one ever taught me this. I had to figure it out the hard way. I would spend 80% of the budget on one task without even realizing it. And guess what? No one told me, no one stopped me because at the end of the day, it's on you. It's on you to be proactive. I think I've talked about that before on a previous video, but here's an example. If the budget is $10,000 and the drafting team takes 20 hours at $100, $100 per hour, that's $2,000 gone. Now you have $8,000 left. If your rate is 180 bucks an hour, that gives you about 40 hours to complete your part. So if you stay within budget and the company stays profitable, a profitable business has more money coming in and higher the chances this money will be distributed among the team or going straight to your boss bank account. Now, joking, if you made it here so far, you might enjoy this video that YouTube's suggesting you. I'll see you in the Bang Lab community or I'll see you in the next video.